What's up guys, my name is Max and today we have a new motorcycle. Behind me this is a 2003 Kawasaki Vulcan 800 and believe it or not I got this motorcycle for free. Um, and there is literally nothing better in this world than a free motorcycle except for maybe like a better free motorcycle. But anyway, this thing hasn't run in a few years, but I actually got it from the second owner who's owned it for 15 years, um, which is majority of this bike's life. And as you can see, it's totally stock. I mean, it's even got these stock little mufflers, the paint's in reasonably good shape. A lot of this stuff will buff out. Um, I've already started kind of taking it apart, looking at it. The tires seem to hold air. It's really, it's really not a bad bike at all, and uh, this is perfect timing because I'm going to clean it up and keep it around, maybe for like ACL and stuff like that. It's really nice to have a motorcycle to get around town in. However, this bike's got a couple of things wrong with it. Um, some of them are super easy, like it desperately needs a fuel, oh, an oil change, needs a new battery, plug and play. The bad part is this. This is what happens if you leave no gas with the shitty ethanol gas we have. If you look in there, it is rusty and crusty as fuck. So, we have a list. Basically, the important thing we need to do is we need to get this tank off uh, and get it ready for decontamination. And I'll show you guys how I how I work with rusty tanks. Everybody's got their own formula. Um, we're going to do that. We're going to rebuild the carburetor. We're going to take care of all the little bits and pieces like the battery and the oil change and stuff like that. And hopefully we can get this bike uh, back on the road without too much of an issue. I actually sprayed some ether into it earlier, hooked up a car battery to it, and uh, she cranked right over and fired up. So I'm not I'm not too, too worried. Um, the first part we're going to do is we're going to get this tank off and uh, see, see what we're going to do with it. Just like that we've got everything removed um, this is our cooling system we're gonna take a peek at what's going on in here Let's see if there's ah yeah nice solid green coolant this bike's totally fine don't have to worry about that basically our fuel feed is right here it goes through that valley um, to this little carburetor right here uh, whenever you're working on v-twin bikes v-twin bikes with one carburetor are great because the linkage is easy, there's no synchronization, you basically just take this one carburetor off and rebuild it. Um, and it looks a little daunting because you've got a bunch of like vacuum lines and stuff going here, and the back of this air box is a bunch of vacuum lines going through it. Uh, but really, this shouldn't be too bad to remove this carburetor. I ordered a rebuild kit. Uh, crazy thing is, I got one out of Japan, because um, it was the cheapest and it's like an actual Japanese can rebuild kit. Um, but it'll take a few weeks to get here, or like a week and a half to get here. Um, so we'll kind of put off pulling off the carburetor. I like to pull it off, rebuild it, put it back on. That way I know where everything is. Uh, in the meantime, we can turn our attention to this tank. So this is actually like rusted shut or like seized shut. 
I had to use a uh, pry bar in here along with the key to get this to unlock. And I've, uh, um, to get this to open. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this uh, inside. I'm going to see if I can take some of these rubber gaskets off. If not, we're just going to put this thing straight up in a can of Berryman's Parts Cleaner. Um, that stuff is absolutely vicious, and uh, but it's real good at removing anything including skin that stuff just goes through everything um, with the tank basically what we're going to do is we're going to pull off this petcock assembly um, i went ahead and bought a new one uh, i don't know if i'll use the new one or the old one we'll get all the liquid out of there then we'll seal up the tank um, and fill it with a special concoction here's what i like to use and everyone's got their own opinion on this i like to use maybe for a tank that size one or two quarts of automatic transmission fluid. Most people don't know, ATF is, in a, it is a lubricant, but it's mainly a detergent. Um, it works really good at cleaning stuff up. And the red, then we're gonna fill it to the brim uh, with diesel. And the reason you do that is diesel is a little more caustic. It's gonna do a little better job removing some of that grime. And then in the end, we're gonna basically flush it out with water, get all of that rust particles out of there. Um, the other trick is I put a couple of pieces of chain inside the tank um, basically you just drop them down in there and what's nice about that is you can bounce that chain around i'll come out here one two times a day and just bounce that chain around um, that helps knock some of the bigger chunks of rust off flush it with water when we're done uh, and then flush it with some wd-40 that way it kind of pushes all the water out of it um, and it makes a reasonably nice clean tank the other thing we're going to do is we're going to add, uh, I bought some uh, fuel filters. We're going to add some fuel filters in line, or at least one fuel filter in line, um, just to make sure that we catch any remaining particles. So this is the stuff I was talking about, Berryman's Chem Dip. This stuff is super dangerous. Um, it'll eat the skin off of your hands. Ask me how I know. Um, even just a little bit of exposure. So I got the cap in there, and then out here we have our fuel tank and if you look in that that really is that brown that's not the camera fucking with you that's pretty gross so we have about two quarts of atf and then probably three gallons or whatever the capacity of diesel is in here as well as a length of chain that i can basically bounce around the reason i use chain instead of bolts is it's easier to fish out a chain than it is to make sure you got all the bolts out um, and the reason we use diesel instead of gasoline is because gasoline especially gasoline vapor catches fire real good which is awesome if you have an internal combustion engine not so awesome when it's your house um, that diesel uh, can sit outside for a week um, i can smoke a cigarette over it i can hold an open flame over it it's not going to catch fire because it's diesel also it's nice and oily so it, it you know in case there are any rubber bits inside that gas tank they're not going to dry out everything's going to be nicely lubricated um, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out every day for the next few days and just bounce it around, bounce that chain around in there and just let it smash all that rust off. And then we're going to basically just dump it. Next thing we're going to handle is bleeding the brakes. Um, I get asked this a lot, so I thought I'd go ahead and demonstrate it in this video. Basically, you have your front master cylinder. It's cleaned out, filled with fresh fluid. Down here we have our caliper. And I use this, I don't remember where I got this, bleed o -matic. I think this might be from Harbor Freight. Just a tiny little bottle with a tiny little hose. And what I do is you insert the hose in the end of the, the uh, brake fitting, and then I, I normally put this up here somewhere. You're supposed to have a gravity fed, but mostly I just want it to not fall down. Um, and then what I do is I reach over here and then pump this one, two, three times, and then release the bleed screw. And like that, and you're gonna get, you know, that way you can pump all the way through the system. Uh, this fluid is still pretty dirty, um, but definitely cleaner than it was, because you can see in here the shade of fluid that was in here before. It's pretty, pretty heinous. Um, and the new brake fluid is obviously clear. But there we go, we've bled probably 90% of the fluid out of there. Um, that's all there is to it. Uh, I think this bike has a rear drum brake, which is adjustable. But uh, a rear disc brake, any disc brake is going to bleed like this. Um, on a car, I normally use a larger bottle, but these are great for, for motorcycles. Our new $35 battery is in. Um, should be good. 
that's on. Good. It's got juice. Everything works as it should. Turn this back off. Batteries in. So here's our carburetor. It's broken down. Um, I didn't film taking it off. Sorry. I'll show you guys here in a minute how to put it back on. But this is basically all the important bits. You've got a main jet, a uh, idle jet, or um, yeah, there's another term for this pilot pilot jet. Uh, this is the drain bolt out of the base. This is the main tube that holds uh, the main jet. Um, this is all actually clean on the inside. It's just got a little oxidation on it. Um, this carburetor has a uh, like an injection pump where um, basically whenever you hit the gas, there's an initial squirt of fuel. That's from this. Um, the big spring is from the slide. The small spring is from here. We've got some screws. Here's our slide. Our needle, needle cap is in there. Main body of the carburetor is here. We're going to replace this fuel line. Um, looks like maybe 3 8 um, This is the uh, choke. It basically just screws in. Um, then this is our idle setting. Uh, to, I should get the new carb kit in tomorrow. We're going to replace some of the rubber bits. Maybe replace some of the uh, uh, jets. I don't even remember. I ordered it from Japan. So... Uh, it's been in the mail for a week or two, and I, I don't even remember what comes in the kit. But we're going to replace everything in the kit that comes in the kit. Um, and then we're going to slap this carburetor back on. And for two weeks, our fuel tank has been sitting full of diesel and ATF and all kinds of heinous bubbly chemical reactions. And hopefully that has stripped all of the rust off of it. Um, so once the carburetor is rebuilt and ready to go back on the bike, um, pretty much the next thing is the gas tank and then everything gets reassembled um, and then we're gonna be able to ride it So we've got our overnight parts from Japan. This is super cool. It's a super nice kit um, Like I said, it's a couple weeks to get here, but like I said straight from Japan um, Next thing we're gonna do is I just drilled out this. This is the fuel adjustment screw. Um, it has this little um, aluminum plug in it uh, Set from the factory so you can't tune your bike uh, this one comes with a new needle and I always like to clean this out. So you basically just drill it out, use small, like a tiny, like 1 16th bit, make a little pilot hole and then just step up and it's press fit in there. So eventually it just pops right out. Next thing we're going to do is get in here and then just un wait before we do that. We're just going to unscrew this. Um, it wasn't going down. Normally I check to see what it's set at from the factory, but we're just going to have to Google. Well, that ended up being kind of miserable. I had to use an extractor bit to get it out. See, it's all super gummed up. Um, that's why we replaced these things. So here is our brand new kit. Um, Well, we got good news and bad news. First, the good news. Carburetor is back on. If we pull the choke, which I still need to secure a little bit. Turn that on. Purrs like a kitten, um, which is great. The bad news, unfortunately, is over here. 
So here's our fuel tank, which has been sitting for more than a week. Absolutely no problems. After aggressively flushing it with water and then WD-40, I found this little tiny rust hole that is now releasing the schmoo that is uh, one part WD-40 and one part water. So we're going to have to wait until this thing fully dries, uh, fully evacuates, and then we're going to weld it up, hopefully, uh, if we can. And if we can, then uh, it'll go back on as it is. If we can't, then we're going to be on the hunt for a new tank. The nice thing, though, about having a free motorcycle is that uh, you got a little extra budget to play with. And, you know, I don't know how much it's going to cost, probably somewhere in the realm of, like, 100 to 150 bucks for a good tank like a clean one um, It's more than what I've spent on the whole rest of the bike, but sometimes You just got to do what you got to do, but uh, once that thing has had a chance to fully dry out um, We'll bring it in here and try to weld it so now we're gonna move on to our gas tank in the process of uh, cleaning it out we discovered there was a rust pinhole that basically blew up on me. Um, so I have welded gas tanks in the past. Uh, it is something that is extremely dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so this video will not be an instructional on that. Uh, I don't have a confidence level that I can adequately teach that or communicate that through a video. It's one of those things where if you know how to do it, great. If you don't, I highly recommend buy a new gas tank, take it to a professional. Um, don't just pull out like your Harbor Freight $100 welder and just start cramming on this thing. That's not how this works. Um, so we're basically gonna cut from here to the completed gas tank because I don't, I don't even wanna show you guys how I did this. Um, but basically the idea is that we're gonna seal up that hole, we're gonna reinstall the gas tank and fill it up with gas. And then we should be able to run this thing uh, long enough to get it up to temperature and then do an oil change and be well on our way to being complete. Okay, well, the bike did good. I rode it to the inspection place, got it inspected, got it titled, got it tagged. Um, the carb gummed up on the way home. I was able to jostle it loose, get it running again. So we still need to clean the tank again and adjust the carb again. I also found a sticky throttle um, spot where it would just hang, um, probably because I didn't put something back together correctly. Either way, not a big deal. This is why we do test and tunes. I also have picked up a fuel filter that we'll be installing. Um, probably not going to make it into a future video because it's kind of a little thing. But uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Um, there will be at least one more video on this motorcycle. But uh, check out our adventure trailer build, the blazer build, or the crown line boat build. Um, links will be down below. You can follow, go to my profile, look at all the playlists. Love you guys. Peace.